Hi, good morning. So my name is Nicola. I'm working for CPanel. And yes, we are hiring. So if you're interested, feel free to contact me or any other uh, CPanel employee there. So today I'm there to talk about Perl internals. But this is a very sh um, short introduction of Perl internal. It's mainly for beginners. Why that talk? Because this is exactly the kind of talk I would really enjoy a few years ago when I started working on the compiler at CPanel. Uh, you can get all that information from yourself if you browse the Perl code. It's pretty well documented, but you just need to make the effort. So this is just giving you a glance. And if in the future you plan to do XS code, that might also help. So let's start. In Perl uh, is not a typed language, and that's probably the reason why we love it so much, or we hate it, or depend on the people, which means that we can use my dollar variable to set a def, a number, 42, a string, hello, a um, floating value. Uh, we can even use an, an array, hash. They are, they are special, but they just contain also a set of, of values. Function on, uh, on behind, it's a file handler. So do you know what all these uh, lines have in common? Probably not, OK? So all these lines describe what we call internally a scalar value, which is named uh, SV. So SV stands for scalar value. And this is its C representation. Looks pretty, pretty simple from there. But if you dig the, on, on that representation, the thing to notice there is the type here. OK, it's not a type language, but we have a type somewhere. It's buried in the flag. In fact, it's just stealing a few bits from the flag there. But it's there. So what? Well, we're going to see the, the SV description just after. So SV can, SV can be typed. There is a type. So what are all of them? The null value is a special value. It's mainly the, um, it's, it's a regular SV. Uh, it's there, undef is there. Um, the IV is for integer value, for our 42 is there. The PV is for our pointer value. It's not SV for string because S was already used, so we use PV. And this is the hello string, which is there. The um, floating value is there as an NV. Okay? The array is below here as AV. The, the hash is one HV just on the right. And the, uh, the function, it's a, it's a code, so it's a CV. And the file handler, it's IO. And you, you have more than this on that graph. I'm not sure you can see it pretty well, but if we zoom in, we can clearly split that graph in two parts. Uh, why? The reason is that between the very top part, which describe basic uh, types like uh, strings, integers, and on, um, on reference, behind we have the PVMG, which are the magic. I'm not going to explain what are magics, but mainly what we are saying is that all, all, all the types be, below magix, uh, like array, IV, uh, HV, GV, CV, and IO, they all contain magic. So ma magic, for example, can be a way when you are blessing your, your, your values. So SVC definition, let's go back to C. It's very, very simple. Cannot be more simple than this. This is a struct which contain one head and a body. So what is the head, what is the body? It's pretty hard to see from there. Um, mainly the, bod the body is a void star here. It's the extra pointer to what will be um, used later. And the, uh, the head is, has two parts, the ref count on the flags and the union. And the union is just also an extra pointer. So let's now open a little more ASV.h where you can find this information. So we, we saw the ASV, just a, a, which, which is ASV add with void star. And it's going to, to, to set a pointer of type void star, void on the uh, ref count on the flags for, uh, for the first field. And then the union is pretty scary. But at the end, the only thing you need to um, remember from this is just a pointer. It can be a different type of pointer. It, 
not necessarily a pointer. In some cases, it can be an integer or, or, or sometimes a double pointer, but mainly this, this is it. So if we open little more scroll down in little more in ASV.h, what we can see, we can see all these types there. This is just an enum, and these are all the possible types that can go in the type field. And then we also have a, a mask that we could use later to do a bit mask on, on the flags field to know what is the type of that ASV. This is how we are doing stuff. So from there, it's pretty easy to define any other ASV. You can define the array, uh, AV by using the same, same kind of truck where you're just going to say rather than using a, a void st star, you are going to use a XPV AV. This is an extension that defines the array. And you have the same thing for the XPV GV for the GVs, uh, which are your, your stashes. Uh, you have a CV, you are going an extension for the XPV CV. Same thing for HV, IO, and so on. So what is that XPV stuff. If we just have a look at arrays, and what is an array? An array is a list of elements. So in our case, it's a list of SVs, because it can be any of these SVs. So the only information we need is on how we represent a list in, in C, it's a double pointer. Uh, it's there. The XAV alloc, this is where is your array field. Um, we have two extra uh, information, integers. One to know what's the max of the size allocated for that pointer there. And um, one other to know where is the last value. So when you push something in your array, you are just going to push it there. And we have magics, but as I said, I'm not going to re explain magic. So this is how array are implemented uh, behind the hood. Uh, let's go back to Perl and start from something very, very simple. Uh, like my dollar a equal a number. And let's, let's use devil pick. Uh, you will notice that I'm using devil pick in a very weird way, using a wrapper with eval. You don't need to do this. I'm mainly doing this because I'm using uh, the compare compiler and I try to hide it from there. So in all of those slides, I will use a devil pick and I will just use a dump function. So I have my integer 42 and I'm just going to dump it. What I'm going to see from there. Uh, very nice thing, I can see that the SV is of type IV, okay, and I know this using the flags. The flags tell me also that I OK, which means I can use the um, IV slot and use it as an integer value. And the question is where is that IV slot for storing the integer value? It's in the union that we saw. There's one of the fields which is I SVU. Dot IV. This is where the IV is stored, and there is a trick where, when when you have an IV, you don't really need more than this. You you already have your integer stored in the union. Why should you need an extension to your um, to your IV? So there is a trick where, in fact, the IV any is just going to point to your uh, IV to uh, to fool the system. In fact. If someone wants to access to the value using the any value, it will directly go there. So now let's make it a little more complex by using references. So same integer there. And now I'm going to use another uh, variable, my dollar b, to reference to it. So if I reference it, that means that if I alter the content of b, the con content of a is also go going to be altered. Using, if I say dollar dollar b, equal a one, two, three, then dollar $A is going to be one, two, three. So this is the dump I'm going to do. To, to, to do. Let's dump A before, A after, and B. If I dump A before, uh, for, first thing, I can notice the memory address of the uh, IV for A, which is AC0, OK? And I will find that AV again as part of the um, Union in the, uh, in the RV, and the RV is, in fact, not really a type anymore. It's just stealing because it's just storing um, an integer value for the memory address. So it's using an IV, but it's one RV because there's a flag ROK saying, hey, it's a reference. Use it as a reference. And point to that ASV there. And what I can see is there is a ref count value. And that ref count value just hold 
how many pointer in your code points on, are using that SV to, to know when you can destroy that SV and when you're going to trigger the destroy method in, internally. So that ref count increase, the second I make a new reference of that object, on, on there are, when, with there are B, the ref count increase by one to two. And if I destroy B, that ref count will decrease to one. So you can represent this as this. So our dollar B is on the left, and our dollar A is on the right, and we can see that our dollar B, there's a flag describing as a RV, and it's just using the union uh, name SVURV to just point to the uh, address of our dollar A SV. Let's now make it a little more complex and use a string. So the strings are PV, Okay, so this is a simple string, A, B, C, D, and I'm going to dump it, what I'm seeing there. First thing, it's good news, I see a PV, so it's typed as a PV. There's a flag telling me that's a P, okay, so it, 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 it's, I can use the, the, the PV pointer, and if I have a look at the PV pointer, the PV pointer is A, B, C, D on backslash zero, which means that internally we need an extra character to put the backslash zero at the end to know when the where the string finish. So we have two integer value for the string, cure and len. Cure is the size of the string um, from a pair point of view, and len is the size from a C point of view, which tell you how many characters you have malloced. So if I make that string longer, I can still use the same memory slot by appending to it. But if I am going to a string, string longer than 10, uh, in fact, nine characters, I will need to do a new malloc. Okay. So if you represent it, this, is, this will be this way. You have your SV and you have two pointers, one for the XPV that will hold the, the cure on the land value, and one for what the other pointer is hidden in the union and will point to your strings. Okay. This has three advantages there. That means for when you have a PV, you have three kinds of mallocs. One for your struct, SV, one for your XPV, and one for your strings, okay? Um, if I see after the backslash zero, there is something else. It's weird, it looks like it was introduced in 5.18 or after 5.18. Uh, that character, we're going to have a look of what it is. The idea is when you have a string that's going to be reused, why doing a new malloc? Okay, so this is that character there named is cow, copy on write. And we can see there that if I make that string, I reuse four times by pushing it to an array, then that same string, that same memory address is going to be used five times. This is good, I'm saving memory. If that string was like 100 megabytes, uh, it will only be 100 megabytes in my uh, memory and not 500. That's what that core ref count means. And every time something is going to alter that string, it's going to do the copy only when it needs and decrease that counter. So if we dump these strings there, we can see that all the SV have different memory address, but all the PV are the same. They are sharing the same PV, which means if by mistake someone alter that PV internally, then all the other strings, which were my dollar foo, my dollar bar, they might be altered, but this is not happening. That would be a bug. Um, okay, let's make another example very simple. I make a variable, I start with a number, I assign it a number, this is one IV, then I assign it a string, this is a PV. But in fact, it will be a PV IV. And by just doing this in your program, you are going to upgrade the IV to a PV IV. And if you have a look at the tree of how things are defined, you can always go from top to bottom. You never downgrade. So you can go from IV to PV IV. And what you can see, is if you dump that, you will see that you have a PV IV, and you will notice two things. You will notice that the, the IV field is set to 51, on the PV pointer points to a string with A, B, C, D. But if you have a look closer at the flags, the flags tell you 
only use the string. Only the string is valid there. P or K means only the pointer is valid. You cannot use that uh, uh, IV slot. OK, let's make a slight difference there. By now I start with a str an integer, and I append to that integer an empty string. What's going to happen? It's going to create my string from the integer. I've got my PV with nine, uh, the number 98765, but I also have the value. The value is still stored also in the IV. Uh, unfortunately, there, uh, we lost the, the IOK flag, which means we cannot use the integer value. We will need to recompute it. Um, only the POK is stored. So we can, by doing this, we, we upgrade it to a, to a string. Um, how, where are the values stored? So when you have a PV IV, the string is stored in the PV, and the IV is stored in the um, XPV IV. You will notice the XIV U there. So this is where the IV is stored in the yellow flag, and the, the string is stored in the PV. Um, so one common mistake we can do is to um, reallocate string, which means that if I have a string and I just reforce a string concatenation by appending empty string, like there, and I can zoom in to see it better, what you can notice is that the memory address of the string ABCDF is different in the two cases. It's not preserving the same string. So every time you are going to append empty string to your string, you are going to create a new malloc uh, there. Ashes, uh, it's pretty short to start the hash part. I will try to just give you a glance of ashes. Ashes are the same way. You describe an hash by saying, hey, this is an ASV, and I'm going to use the XPV HV extension. And one hash is nothing else than array. Okay? And so you need to know um, how many keys on uh, how many, uh, what the size of your array and how many keys you are using. This is the keys on max there. Um, this is a, you, then when you have collision, you are going to use um, list, link list, the HE. And what you will notice is that every HE contains the hash value, which knows where to put, which bucket you are going to store it. On the, the string there, it's the H, the hash key, and one of the very good things is by default, all these hash keys are shared, which means if you are reusing the same hash key, you will have only one entry. So I'm going to pass this slide there pretty fast, because uh, we do not really have time. But if you dump one hash, what you will notice, you will notice that you have the hash quality, which is a very good indicator, and you have that real number, 0711, that just tell you that by default, you have uh, Seven, uh, you have eight slots in your hash. Seven of them has no value. One of them has one value. Okay, and the, the field tell you that one slot is used. And max tell you this is the max uh, value on your array where, that you can use, which is malloc. So we are going. What we saw there in the previous slide, we saw that the max was seven. So we are going just to try to trigger a little more. Uh, that to force a, a split. A split will mean that we are going to grow that hash to hold more than seven um, value. So if I, the second I add two values, I can see there that my two values are in two different buckets. That's what the one, two means there. OK. And um, it, the second I add three keys, I have a hash collision there. Uh, and that can really depend on the runtime because hash are going to different locations at every runtime. You have a hash seed going there. So what I, I'm going to pass this because we are pretty short in time. Okay, what I what you really need to re, re, remind from this that the more your hash grow, the more malloc is going to do, and you have one trick to avoid it. If you know that you are going to manipulate a very very big hash. You can just set a begin block like this with the number of keys in your hash. You can assign it to the value you want, and that will automatically create a hash that will hold that number of value for you, which means you are going to avoid all this extra split uh, 
when you are going to reach 124. And what you can notice is that when you are adding a few values to that hash, um, it still holds the 123, uh, 124 uh, value, which, uh, because it, that is the zero. That's why you have 10, uh, 23 there. So this is a good trick to, for hash optimization for big hash. So if you want to go uh, further, I would highly recommend to read Perldog Perl, uh, Perlguts. There is also an illustrated version of, of Perlguts maintained by Rainy, which is named Ilguts. Um, this is all the kind of useful module that I would recommend to dump and play with the uh, internal, Perl internals. This was just very, very short introduction in 20 minutes. Uh, that's all I have for today.